Pretty much everyone has a cell phone these days, but obviously they're not always perfect. Sometimes you get spotty coverage, even in really popular areas, and in some rural areas, it's impossible to get a signal at all. But imagine you had a phone that didn't rely on cell tower signals, but rather used the satellites overhead to get a signal anywhere in the world. As you may know, satellite phones do actually exist, and in fact, I have one right here. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Why you might want one, how they work, how much they cost, and all that. Now, before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Video Blocks, who also provided the cool stock footage that you just saw and that I'll be using in more of this video. Video Blocks has one of the largest stock video libraries out there with over 3 million videos, after effects, and motion backgrounds, and it's constantly growing. Plus, their contributor marketplace gives 100% of the commissions back to the artists. Of course, you can also use these clips in your own videos because they all come with royalty-free free license agreements, so you won't get hit with any copyright claims. And you guys are getting a deal because Videoblocks is giving away seven days of free access to their library. And yes, you can keep using the videos you download afterwards because you get that royalty-free license with them. So be sure to check that out at videoblocks.com YouTube or click on the link in the description. And now, let's continue. So first of all, why would anyone actually need a satellite phone anyway? Well, it shouldn't be too hard to imagine. They would be really useful in a situation where usual phones aren't gonna work. One example might be during a natural disaster like the big hurricanes we've seen and all the phone networks go down, landlines and all. Or maybe you're just going somewhere with no cell service in the first place. If you're someone who likes hiking, maybe you trip and break a bone and need to call for help or even something as simple as letting someone know you're running late while hiking. On the flip side, it would also allow someone to get in contact with you when they otherwise couldn't. Some other situations might be if you go mountain climbing or camping, or even if you're going on a road trip where you'll be driving through rural areas with poor service. I'm sure you get the idea. Now, the first thing you'll wanna know about satellite phones is what kinds are there? because there are several different services out there, all with their own satellites, and they are not interchangeable. But there are really three big ones to know, which are Iridium, Inmarsat, and Globalstar. And these are the ones I'll be using as examples. As I mentioned before, all of these networks have their own so-called satellite constellations orbiting above Earth. First, we have Iridium, which is the only one that has 100% global coverage even in the North Pole. This is because their satellite constellation consists of 66 satellites orbiting in a pattern that covers the entire planet. And because the satellites are constantly moving at 17,000 miles per hour across the sky, this means that even if you can't get a signal at one point, it's only a matter of time until a satellite moves into a better position. Though this also means that you could have a connection and then lose it if the satellite moves away, but at some point you will get a connection. Next, we have Globalstar, which has a similar network as Iridium, except it has 24 satellites and doesn't have coverage right up near the poles. So it's got nearly complete global coverage and it works the same way where you'll be able to get a signal anywhere within that coverage area, even if you have to sometimes wait a bit. The third service, Inmarsat, works very differently. They own 13 satellites, which serve different purposes, but for the normal satellite phone service, only three of the satellites are used. Now, you might be thinking, three, that's it? But there is a difference. Inmarsat satellites are much further from the Earth, meaning that each satellite can cover much more area. And these satellites are also in geosynchronous orbit, which means they are in perfect sync with the Earth's orbit and stay perfectly stationary in the sky. An advantage of this is that if you get a lock on a satellite signal, you don't have to worry about losing the signal because the satellite isn't going to move. But there are a couple drawbacks as well. If you don't have a direct line of sight to the satellite, you'll have to move until you do, such as if something is in the way like a big mountain. Also, these satellites orbit at the equator, so as you go further north or south, the satellites have a lower angle in the sky, making them more likely to be obstructed by a landmass or something like that. If you go too far north and south, you won't be able to get a signal at all. 
Okay, so now you know about the different companies, how much does it cost to use them? Well, first you'd have to buy a satellite phone. And you have to choose carefully because each satellite company only makes a few different phone models at most, and they can only be used with their respective network. In any case though, all of them are going to be pretty expensive. Iridium phones are going to cost you somewhere around $1,000 depending on where you buy it from. The one I have is the latest model, the Iridium Extreme, which goes for about $1,100 for example. Inmarsat's main phone is the iSat Phone 2, which I think is actually the best looking phone at least, and that one goes for about $700. And then Global Star has the 1700 model phone, which is around $500. But of course, if you only need one for a little while, you can rent one of these for maybe about $5 to $10 a day. But wait, that's not all you have to consider, because you also have to buy a service plan. And those ain't cheap either, no matter what service you use. And prices will also vary, because most cell phone plans are sold through resellers. From what I've seen, if you plan to actually use your phone, the bare minimum plan is going to cost you around $50 a month. And that might get you literally 10 minutes of talk time. Yeah, it's not that much and prices can go up to hundreds a month. Or you might be able to get an emergency plan, which I know Iridium has, which is about $300 a year, and that comes with a whopping zero minutes. And every time you use it, it costs $6 a minute. Nothing's included. So even just to use the phone at all, to be able to use it, it's at least $300 a year. Which brings me to my next topic, how much it costs to make calls to a satellite phone from a regular phone. This is going to vary depending on your phone company, but again, it's gonna be always expensive, and it's treated as making an international call. For example, on AT&T, calling an Iridium phone costs about $4, or calling an Inmarsat or Global Star phone is a whopping $12 a minute. Though I should point out that you might be able to find a service that will give you a local telephone number that connects to your satellite phone, which would make it easier to call you. I know this is possible with Global Star where you can get a USA phone number, but I'm not sure about the others. Another thing to note is apparently some cell phone companies block calls to satellite phones unless you specifically ask them to allow you to do that. So that would be something to look into as well and tell people who might try to call you on your phone. Oh, and believe it or not, yes, you can get text and even data service on some satellite phones, but we'll get into that in a minute. At this point, let's say you got your satellite phone and bought the service and it's ready to go. How do you actually go about using it? Well, first of all, it won't work inside because you need an unobstructed signal. But if you do have a strong signal, it probably won't take long at all, just a matter of seconds. If you don't have a visible satellite, assuming you're on Iridium or Global Star, you probably just have to wait a few minutes or so. And of course, if you're in a really unfortunate area, you might only have a short window of signal before you have to wait again. If you wanna make a phone call to or from a satellite phone, it's definitely a little bit more involved. Calling from a satellite phone, you first have to dial the international prefix 00, then the country code, such as 1 for the United States, and then the regular phone number. If you're calling to a satellite phone, it's even more complicated. First, you dial the outgoing international dialing code for your country, which would be 011 for the US or 00 for Europe. Then you have to dial the prefix for the particular satellite network, such as 8816 for Iridium or 870 for Inmarsat. And then you can dial the satellite phone number. Maybe it's best you just save it as a contact in your phone, I think. All right, we've almost covered everything, but we haven't yet gone over data and texting. And yes, depending on your phone model and service plan, you can do both. Texting is pretty straightforward. It's mostly the same as with a cell phone. You can also use an email to message a satellite phone, but we're not gonna get into that. Some phone models also have the ability to automatically text out GPS coordinates, which is also convenient if you have to let someone know where you are. For data, as you can imagine, you're not exactly gonna get 4G speeds. In fact, it's so slow that you'll be wishing you had dial-up. So typically data speeds are up to 10 kilobits per second. Yes, that's 1 100th of a megabit. It's pretty much only good for checking email, basically. However, Iridium is currently launching upgraded satellites, 
So in a few years, they say that they can offer speeds of about 1.5 megabits per second. That will be nice. Also, you might be able to get a separate Wi-Fi hotspot device like iSat Hub from Inmarsat, which can supposedly do up to 300 kilobits per second. But either way, I think it's safe to say you won't be streaming any YouTube videos from your satellite phone. So I believe that should cover everything. A satellite phone probably isn't something that most people need, but depending on what you do, it could literally be a lifesaver. And as I said before, if you know you're gonna be taking a trip where you could use one, you can always just rent one. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. Are you considering getting a satellite phone? Did you not even know anything about them before? We can talk about that down in the comments. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos a few times every week. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.